coming up on Cardinals Insider. I think it's it's a great place to come come and play soccer. From baseball to soccer, bringing the U.S. women's soccer team to Bush. Plus, it's a pretty involved process. Probably one of the more involved things we do down here. What's it take to change the field in a matter of days? We'll take a look. And later, we're out here playing playing cornhole, raising money and awareness for those in the fight against cancer. Former Cardinals pitcher Jason Mott returns to support our community. Those stories and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider. I'm your host, Ozzie Smith. Bush Stadium is known for baseball, but sometimes we host other events here. The most recent example is soccer. The United States women national team hosted a friendly at Bush as part of the World Cup send-off tour. And as usual, St. Louis sports fans made it an unforgettable atmosphere. Thirty-six thousand, maybe the second biggest standalone domestic crowd in U.S. history. So well done, St. Louis. I'm going to give you a massive flashback. 1984, Braddock Road Blue Bells National Championship, Bush Stadium, two to one over Seattle, and I was there. So I've been here. I've been a long time. So I think it's it's a great place to come come and play soccer. I mean, it still sticks in my memory as one of the funnest, greatest environments and atmospheres in terms of playing in. And um, so I was, you know, I was pretty delighted that we we get to come back to this venue. Obviously, it's Becky's homecoming, and that's awesome. It's a great atmosphere, and that's what the players love about it. So um, we're, we're excited to be here. We're in downtown, and so it's really fun. They get to see a lot of the, the things that I grew up kind of just experiencing. And so, yeah, I've asked, I've been asked a few questions, and it's, it's been fun. It's really great to be able to show my teammates kind of where I came from. Four years ago when we were here, it's one of the best environments that a lot of us have ever played in. And so to have that again, it's really hard to replicate that kind of crowd. And so just to have that energy um, and the sheer number of people in a beautiful stadium like this, I think it's just going to be a wonderful night. I mean, St. Louis always shows up so huge for soccer. Every time we play here, it's a, just a huge crowd, a rowdy crowd. To be able to bring the, the traveling circus, as I call it, and hopefully put on a good show for the fans. I think it's cool for the kids to see that that's what's possible, but also to show that Cardinals aren't the only ones that can entertain in Bush Stadium. It was so much fun. I think I'm so like in tune to the game when I'm like on the field, but um, when I got subbed out, I really got a chance to kind of look around and see everyone with their flashlights and just like all the chants and everything. And so it was such a fun game to, to be a part of. It's just kind of wild thinking about like how far I've come and on this journey and, and to come full circle back to St. Louis and to be able to play in front of my friends and family is just great. The fans come out to support us. It's, you know, it's a unique stadium in terms of playing a soccer game. And, I mean, I said to the players before the game, it's, you know, part of it is certainly we have our own things to achieve, but it's also making sure that our fans get behind us and appreciate what we do. And know that when we go to France, and there'll be a lot of different fans free over there, we still feel the support back home because it was an amazing night, truly. The American Outlaws were part of the crowd at Bush cheering on the U.S. women. This dedicated group of fans brings a unique look and sound to every game it attends. USA! 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 Well, the American Outlaws are the largest supporters group for the United States national soccer teams. That's the men, the women, and even the youth. And we, anytime you watch a game on TV or around the world, you're going to have American Outlaws in the stands rambunctiously supporting their team. It's going to be loud. So we go 90 minutes strong, cheering, chanting. Usually we'll have some drum breaks where the drummers will just do their thing, just having fun. We've got People bring in flags, they'll be waving flags for 90 minutes. You know, we have capos that actually lead the chant, so they'll be energizing the crowd as well. So, I mean, it's just gonna be loud, you know, people are gonna be energized, and yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be fun.
we hope to lead the stadium in as much noise as we can uh, and to hopefully drive the team to a win. That's what we try to do. So I think with the section that we have, uh, close to 600, I know this stadium was like 30 some thousand. Uh, so it's not as big as some other games, but I think it's going to be big and we're going to be loud. It doesn't matter what kind of stadium we're in, have 36,000 fans supporting the women's team is incredible. And I know they appreciate that support. I think they're going to eat it up and um, usually they play they play harder when there's more people cheering. More people in the stands and they see faces and you know they're ready to go. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. It's definitely a challenge, you know, as, as a groundskeeper turning a baseball field into a soccer field. How do they do that? Also coming up. It's a great time. It's a fun game. Anyone can do it. How Jason Mott gives back. Preparing the field for an entirely different sport is a big undertaking. The Bush Stadium grounds crew did just that, flipping the playing surface from baseball to soccer in just a matter of days. Well, right now we're kind of in the finishing touches of turning the baseball field into a soccer field for the U.S. women's soccer team. It's a pretty involved process, probably one of the more involved things we do down here other than, you know, concerts. There's a lot of moving parts, you know, we have to basically take all the portions of a baseball field and, and sod it and turn it into grass. Uh, all the dirt areas, we rip out the mound, sod that, sod home plate, sod the baseline, sod the infield. And then we have to sod portions of the warning track as well because soccer fields are so wide. As they roll in the sod out, they'll, they'll be a little bit of a seam from, the, from one roll, side roll to the next. There's a tractor that comes along with a little fork that sticks out the side of it that stabs the sod and pushes it tight against the other side roll. That way you don't get any seams or any holes or any gaps in those seams. It's a nice tight transition. That way when it's all locked in place, those big pieces of sod don't, they don't move because they don't ever really root down because they're not down long enough. So you have to bring them in really thick and really wide and really heavy so that when the players are running and cutting on them that they don't move. So it's a, it's a pretty involved evolution. It takes us a couple of days to do it. You know, the first day is mainly all the excavation of the, the dirt. Um, then we start doing some of the tighter areas with the sod. And the second day we come in, start finishing off all the sod work, start painting our lines and putting the goal post out. And by the third day, we're having a, a workout. So it's, it takes us about two or three days to do it. I mean, just go back and forth. Yeah, I'd go with the seams. It's definitely a challenge, you know, as, as a groundskeeper turning a baseball field into a soccer field. I mean, it's, it's enjoyable to, to have that accomplishment, to say that you were able to do it and then turn it back into a baseball field and have little or no, you know, remnants of the, of the soccer field. Straight ahead. This is near and dear to me because uh, I lost my mom to cancer back in 2013. Current Cardinal players join with Jason Mott to K Cancer. Plus, the Cardinals just traded for me. It was, a, it was one of the happiest days of my life. HUD reflects on his time as a Redbird. Have you listened to the Cardinals Insider Podcast yet? Each week, the show welcomes players, executives, and alumni. Plus, hear audio from the Cardinals Radio Archives. Take Cardinal Baseball with you on the Cardinals Insider Podcast. Listen or subscribe wherever you get your podcast, or at cardinals.com slash podcast. The Jason Mott Cornhole Challenge has become one of St. Louis marquee charity events each year. It's an evening of fun, food, and a great cause raising money to K-Cancer. Here's what the sixth annual version of the event looked like. We're out here playing cornhole, raising money and awareness for those in the fight against cancer. So, you know, uh, for us, it's, it's a great time. It's a fun game. Anyone can do it. Colton's nice enough to, to partner along with us here. It's about his third, fourth year doing this. We're happy to do it and, like I said, help those who are going through, through a tough time battling cancer right now. For me, you know, baseball's all been a passion, but, you know, finding this later on in life, you know, something that took, you know, someone near and dear to my heart, uh, you know, really gave me a fire to, to help out people, you know, in need and people are dealing with this same disease. I seen what it did to my mom and, you know, the things she had to go through and, you know, I want to do whatever I can to help anybody going through the same thing. 
It doesn't just affect the person battling, it affects their, their families, it affects their neighborhoods, their communities, and people pull together, like I said, to show people who are going through this that, that they've got their back and that people do care. So for us, we continue to do this because it's something, uh, it's our way to show people who are going through the fight that you're not in alone, to help people the way that people help my wife's grandfather. We always have a good time, guys coming down, supporting the event, playing cornhole. I mean, you can't, you can't have more fun down here. It's always good times. There's a lot of good competition and uh, there's always a champion at the end and we're always excited to watch that. So it's, it's, it's a great event and, you know, just proud to be a part of it. Where is the best Cardinals pregame party? It's at Cardinal Nation inside Ballpark Village. I know from experience. When you're here for the pregame party, you're literally a part of baseball heaven. You have a view directly into Bush Stadium, right across Clark Street. You're on the second floor looking into the stadium. It's lively, it's fun. We have a DJ for every event. He has giveaways, so you can, you can get tickets to another game. You can get other free pregame party tickets. Being a part of the St. Louis Cardinals and the official pregame party, you never know who's gonna show up. We literally just had Ozzy Smith come in and uh, talk to the crowd and throw out some giveaways and uh, had an interview with our DJ. The whole entire crowd stood up, stopped whatever they were doing, stopped talking, and uh, it, it was all eyes on Ozzy. You guys are loud. <laughs> they had no idea that he was going to come, uh, so it was, it was a lot of excitement, a lot of surprise, and the DJ pumps them up, and uh, the the one-on-one the -on -one interview that just was witnessed by the people that were here at the pregame party, I guarantee you they'll never forget it. So when people come to the pregame party, they can expect to have a good time, hear some good music, maybe see some Cardinals players, have a lot of great food. And really what's important is we want to make sure that we get you in a good mood to go across the street and cheer on the Redbirds. It's time for this week's trivia question. Rex Hutler is now best known for his role on Kansas City Royals telecast but he played 13 big league seasons, including three with the Cardinals. What year did he arrive in St. Louis? Was it 1988, 1989, 1990, or 1991? The answer when we return. We're back with the answer to this week's trivia question. We asked which year Rex Hudler arrived in St. Louis. The answer is 1990. On April 23rd, Montreal dealt him to the St. Louis Cardinals in exchange for right-handed pitcher John Costello. His 251 games as a Cardinal were the most he played for any one team. Earlier this season, Hood was back in St. Louis and he reflected on his time as a Redbird. He was dubbed Hurricane Huddler, and it's not hard to see why. Notre Dame offered him a football scholarship. Instead, he chose pro baseball, but kept that hard-nosed football attitude. Once I reached professional baseball and people started paying to watch me play, it was like, you know what, that's, that's one of the things I can do. I can hustle and give you all I got. From 1990 to 1992, he gave all that he had in St. Louis. When Montreal traded him in April of 90, he instantly knew he'd treasure his time as a Cardinal. Honey, guess what? We're going to the World Series. The Cardinals just traded for me. It was, a, it was one of the happiest days of my life. The World Series part never happened, but there was still plenty of fun during his Redbird tenure. I didn't hit a gap very often. I wasn't the best hitter, but when it, once in a while I'd hit a gap at Bush Stadium, and, I, and as I got running towards second base, I could hear the crowd roar. I could hear 40,000 people, and they were coming up, and I'm not stopping. I couldn't stop, so I just kept going. <laughs> and I would cartwheel into third base, and the place would go crazy, and they would throw me out. So last year, when Whitey Herzog came to Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, he goes, kid, you're the only player I ever had that got thrown out of third base and got a standing ovation. During his first season with the club, Huddler played for three Hall of Fame managers, Whitey Herzog, Red Shandings, and Joe Torre. And Red specifically had a very nice endorsement for Huddler's hustle. One day he told me, you know, kid, you'd be great. You'd have been great in our day. And I was like, you mean your, your day, Red? Yeah, the Gas House Gang. You know, you and Pepper Martin would have been great teammates. And so I, I was so flattered by that compliment. Swing and a miss, strike three. The throw, they can get him. 
They do! Only three years in St. Louis, but there's still a mutual admiration even today as Hustle and Hart formed a connection that's lasted. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. Coming up. My first baseball game I attended was when I was about three days old. Meet a Cardinals prospect with a batting average to note in Memphis. Let's take a look back at this moment in Cardinals history. Another left-handed batter. The outfield is straight away, reaches in. So is Hernandez. Here's the pitch from Porsche to Boa. A swing and a ground ball to third. Reach has it. Throw, no hitter. And Porsche has won his third game of the year, and he is mobbed by his teammates. Don't hurt him. Infielder Tommy Edmond is in his fourth season in the Cardinal system. He opened the year at Memphis and through early May was hitting better than 330. That effort makes him the subject of this week's Bear Farm Report. I played baseball at Stanford from 2014 to 2016. Um, and then got drafted in 2016 by the Cardinals, started in State College. Um, and kind of slowly been advancing my way up the system since then. I think I've hit every, every level for at, at least a couple weeks so far. I ended in Memphis last year. Really excited to see what this year brings. That ball's up and it's gone. Two run homer for Tommy Edmond, his first on the season. So my dad is actually a high school coach. Um, so I, my first baseball game I attended was when I was about three days old. So I've pretty much always been around the baseball field. Um, and I think it was good growing up, hanging around the, the high school baseball players, kind of hanging around their practice and like shagging their batting practice and stuff like that. So I think from a very young age, I was kind of exposed to the older guys. And I think that definitely helped uh, my advancement as I, as I grew up. <laughs> Last year was my first big league spring training and that was a pretty surreal experience playing with guys like Yachty and Wainwright that I had grown up watching um, and just being in the same clubhouse as them. They just have so much knowledge over all the years that they've played at the major league level that uh, it's uh, all you can do is just sit there and listen because you learn so much. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, just have, playing with an organization that has the tradition that the Cardinals do, um, it's crazy. I, I remember just being so excited when I got drafted by the Cardinals and knowing that I'm going to a great organization. I, I've seen that throughout every level that I've played at so far. When you take a picture specifically for Instagram, you're doing it for the gram. It's another way of saying you want to show the world something fun you did or saw. For this week's Ask a Cardinal, we see which of the guys have done it for the gram. For the gram, <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. I, all my pictures I posted for the gram, really, but I never like jumped off a building or did a front flip off a wall for the gram, though. No. I've seen some pretty crazy stuff, though. I do not, no. I'm aware of what Instagram is, but I don't have one myself. I feel like every picture I take is for the gram. I'm not somebody that's just like taking pictures just to keep them on my phone. So I feel like if I'm taking a picture, it's for the gram. I was just sitting at home and, you know, I just said, whatever, just throw it on Twitter, see what happens. Um, you guys know the video I'm talking about, yeah, the bench press one. <laughs> I have not, no, I don't, I'm not Tyler O'Neill. I can't bench press 405 pounds, so I'm not going to throw it. Whatever I can bench press isn't going to be real impressive for the gram, so I haven't done anything for the gram, no. You have to log on to my Instagram and see, because I always say, I did this for the gram. Follow me on Instagram. Fox Sports Midwest is proud to support the Cardinals' Ted Savage RBI Golf Classic, hosted by Cardinals manager Mike Schilt. Held Monday, June 24th at Norwood Hills Country Club, this unique experience will pair foursomes with a Cardinals celebrity, including current players, coaches, alumni, and broadcasters. Enjoy post-golf cocktails and hors d'oeuvres featuring a question-and-answer session with Mike Schilt. For additional information, visit cardinals.com slash RBI golf.
This episode is coming to a close, but we're always online at cardinals.com slash insider. Plus, our YouTube page houses all of our content, including individual stories and past episodes. That's it for this episode. We'll catch you next week right here on this channel. We leave you with the sights and sounds of Cardinals Nation.